Hi there guys, this is Chris Coney speaking and welcome back. Now in this lesson, I'd like to explain how security and convenience are often at opposite ends of the security spectrum. So this means on one end of the security spectrum, we have the most secure system possible, but it's one that's really, really hard to use. So high security, low convenience. And then the other end of the security spectrum, we have the most convenient system possible, but it's really easy to break into. So very high convenience, very low security. For example, it would be convenient if we just left our houses, our cars, and our phones and our computers unlocked at all times, just so we could then just pick up and start using them whenever we want to. That would be very, very convenient, wouldn't it? Unfortunately, if we can pick up and start using it with no unlocking required, so can everyone else. So we have to decide on a bit of a trade-off based around our own personal preferences. So there are two ends of the extreme and there's every gradient in the middle, every shade of gray in the middle, shall we say. So in this course, I'm gonna teach you what I believe to be the most optimal balance or the most optimal point on this security spectrum. And I'm gonna include all the tools that I know of to get the best balance of security without making it absolutely impossibly difficult to use. Now my system does require a bit of extra patience and a bit of extra effort, but the extra security is well worth it, I can assure you. If an attacker approaches you as a target and then realizes that you have a reasonably good level of security, they'll likely give up on you as a target and just go and find someone easier to exploit. So that's a real big point here. Because of that, your security doesn't have to be absolutely rock solid perfect. It just needs to be high enough or strong enough for it to be impractical for anyone to attempt to steal from you. And even then, they would have to have a reasonable degree of confidence as to how much they could steal if they were successful to make it worth their effort. So a good rule of thumb when it comes to crypto security is more money, more security. Or put it another, another way, more money, more layers. So for example, if you lived in an abandoned building in absolute squalor, there would be no need for doors or windows or locks because there would be nothing of value to steal. So therefore there's nothing to protect. So that's on one end of the spectrum. But by contrast, if you store like massive gold reserves like Fort Knox, for example, you install layers upon layers upon layers upon layers of security before you get anywhere near the valuable asset. And even if you wanted to remove the valuable asset, you then have to go back through those layers and layers and layers of security, right? So if the average person had say $500, they would just go and invest that whole $500 into crypto in this case. You know, they would be much better off investing say $475 dollars in crypto and then spending the other $25 on security or that proportion. Now I'll explain this in detail a bit later, but you can have different storage solutions for your crypto with different levels of security. You then just allocate larger amounts of crypto to the most secure places and you can store smaller amounts in the less secure places. So for example, you might walk around with say $100 worth of physical cash in your wallet, which goes in your back pocket but you probably wouldn't walk around with like $100,000 of cash in your back pocket, would you? I mean, it wouldn't fit. So you'd have to have it in a bag, but you wouldn't do that, would you? Same goes for crypto, right? I keep a small amount of crypto on my phone in a wallet app for when I want to use it when I'm out and about. And then I have a hardware vault to keep my larger crypto holdings, which I never carry on me, never. So we'll get you set up like this later on with the same system that I use. Um, I have this lesson explaining each element in turn and how to implement it. So don't worry about that. The purpose of this lesson really was just to explain this security spectrum and how sometimes people intentionally disable levels of security out of convenience. So watch out for that with yourself. You might find yourself wanting to do that. I can almost guarantee it. At some point you will catch yourself going, oh, this just seems like extra effort. And you'll want to disable those extra layers of security that we've set up in this course. But um, in doing so, you are greatly increasing your risk. What's the point in putting the extra layers in if you leave them all unlocked? I mean, if you're happy to go without the security, fine, but 
You don't want your crypto stealing, so that's why I assume you're taking this course. At the end of the day, it is your choice, right? I'm going to teach you how to be as secure as you possibly can be, but whether you follow my advice or not, like I said in a previous lesson, is really down to you. It's your crypto you're putting at risk after all, so I hope you followed my advice to the letter, but it really is down to you. But that's all for this lesson, so until the next one, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.